All right, short intro for those of you keeping score at home. Here is the rear side of the upper control arm in place. Here's the new upper control arm. Here's the left, uh, the front side of the upper control arm. This upper control arm did not fit. I was pissed off because I ordered it. Cops are on my ass to move this car. It would not fit. That and that would not fit in those two brackets. There's about a quarter of an inch difference. Oh yeah, I was happy. Here is a shim, I guess it's a shim. I don't know what it is, what you call it. This sits, well, it, it did sit right there. See, that's one of these shims on the inside. There's the rubber part, and there was supposed to be a shim right there. Well, guess what? Well, actually, there is a shim right there. I put that one back in. Uh, I took two of them out. Okay, I took one out here, and I took one out over here on the inside of both of these control arm uh, pivot points. On the inside of both of them, I took this out. Had to take it out. It wouldn't fit otherwise. It's a non-essential part. Except probably it is. And I have just screwed this up. Note to self. Buy Motocraft parts from a dealer or somebody local so that when it doesn't fit, you can return it. Because I don't have an opportunity to return it. Because this has got to be gone in the next, what, 24 hours or so? Yeah. I didn't torque this down to spec. I just snugged it up. Because, well, you got to put the weight of the car on it first. All right. See that steering knuckle? That was the king hell bitch of the universe to get back on. The reason? Because it's heavy. And Big Plans here is not very... Um, strong anymore. Well, maybe I never was. Oh, well. But I'm not anymore, that's for sure. <sighs> Boy, it was a struggle. Here's how I did it. First, I put it on a... Well, that's not a jack stand, but I had a three-ton jack stand here, and I put the weight on it, supported it on this. Uh, uh, this, I supported it on a three-ton jack stand. And then, I took the CV axle right here, and I threaded it in. I put some... Well, it's called fluid film, but it's whatever WD-40 makes. It's the same thing. I put it on there, and then I got it in there somehow. And then I threaded that nut on there, and I thought I was doing great until this got loose because it wasn't it wasn't connected at that point. And it went pop! I mean, right in the mouth. Ah, it didn't hurt me, but it's pretty undignified. Then I put the... Uh, God damn it, I can't see it, I'm sure. Look at that. I put that there. It didn't work. Oh hell, let's see. Get some light on it. Uh, can I? Can I get some light on it? Yeah, maybe. On the ball joint, sorry if you can't see it. Uh, and then. Whew, I'll put the tie rod on. Again, not torqued down, just snugged up. Then after I got all that done, I noticed that the ball joint boot right here had fallen out. It's not there anymore. <laughs> it had fallen off the ground. So I gotta take this off again to put the boot on. <sighs> yeah. yeah. Another undocumented feature on the side of the control arm, at least on this car, with the air suspension, there's this bracket. As you can see, I put it on here. Now on my car, it has a little metal nub right there and another little med metal nub right there to tell you, you know, where to put it. And this one doesn't have it, so you just have to guesstimate, which is fine. I just measured it using the old control arm. This bracket has a little pivot point on it here. I don't know, pull it off. Anyway, there's a pivot point on there. It's like a little ball ball and socket and that pops onto the ball and socket and that you know goes up and down depending on where you are on your suspension and it will either inflate or deflate 
the air suspension bag. Yeah. Okay, that's in there now.